Today on Game Link, news about video games brought to you by Video James. <laughs> Uh, they they make me read these. Valve is being sued for 656 million pounds, or about 843 million dollars, for allegedly rigging the PC games market. The UK lawsuit accuses Valve of forcing anyone who publishes on Steam to sign price parity obligations that prevent selling titles for cheaper on other platforms, and ripping off 14 million UK gamers in the process. So as an example, even though the Epic Game Store charges publishers 18% less for each sale on their platform than Steam, games on the Epic Store can't be 18% cheaper. That's why I won't be releasing my semi-autobiographical indie game, James Quest, anytime soon. When the time is right. <laughs> the lawsuit was filed as a collective action, which is like a class action in that a group is represented by an individual. Said individual is digital rights activist, and the answer to the question, who shot Bolt? Vicky shot Bolt. <laughs> to, <laughs> to encourage UK gamers to join the complaint, the site steamuos.com co.uk has been launched. The case isn't without merit. A UK court just denied Sony's request to dismiss a similar lawsuit, and Valve is facing another claim themselves in the US. I don't want to jinx it or anything, but it's looking pretty good for James Quest. James Quest sequel? Many high profile games may have leaked thanks to the Epic Game Store. They're back for another story. For a brief period before Epic shut it down, a third party site called Epic DB cataloged everything in the Epic Game Store database, similar to what Steam DB does for Steam. However, users on the Family Boards forums discovered that search results on Epic DB were turning up unreleased content and titles. Oops! Take it all with a grain of salt though, because it's not all real. Look at this publisher. There's no way a Bloodborne remake is being released by an entity who seems to have typed their name with their face. There are some highly anticipated unannounced titles that seem to be legit though, with many titles seemingly listed under code names. The leaks seem to point to Final Fantasy 16 and The Last of Us 2 getting PC ports soon. Plus there's also a listing for Final Fantasy 9 remake. That game's existence was revealed during the 2021 GeForce Now leak. Two leaks? It's gotta be real. Personally, the game that draws my eye the most is the one codenamed Buttercaca. As a mature and seasoned newsman, I know that Buttercaca is a Swedish pastry. There's nothing at all funny about it. I bet it's delicious. Just fun to say. Xbox may still have more games to reveal, even after their massive game showcase. Windows Central co-managing editor slash Xbox Insider, I thought we were talking about the slash the guitarist for a second. <laughs> I wish. Jez Corden tweeted a day after the Xbox event claiming it's only part of what's coming. When asked to elaborate on that, he said, it's only part of what's coming. Fortunately, fellow insider and lover of double letters, Paris Lilly, decided to be slightly more informative. Taking to the Reset Era forums on Tuesday, Lilly has claimed multiple people at Xbox have told him there will be a similarly big event at Gamescom this August, and that there's so much more for Xbox to show. One notable absence from the game showcase was the rumored Xbox handheld. Phil Spencer all but confirmed it, but didn't give us a glimpse of the, of the precious. But that might not actually be what gamers should be excited about. What gamers really want is blinks. You know, the cat with the time vacuum from 2002. My boy Mumpton Bossman on Reddit said Phil confirmed a sequel. And if he doesn't follow through, he'll have to answer to the Blinks boys. That's what we call ourselves on Discord. But we have a different name for our sponsor, Thermaltake. You may know them for their stylish and unique computer cases, but they've brought that same level of polish and attention to detail to their GR500 Racing Sim cockpit. The frame is made from aluminum alloy and reinforced steel for better stability, and the fiberglass bucket design is adjustable so you can stay comfortable during those longer races. The GR500 is compatible with popular racing sim hardware from brands like Logitech, Fanatec, and Thrustmaster, my favorite. So check it out now at the link below where you can also find the perfect triple monitor stand to pair with it. You've impressed me, kid. I think you're ready. That's right. You're moving up to the quick bits, baby. Elden Ring has hit an impressive 25 million copies sold, according to a tweet from developer From Software, posted ahead of next week's launch of the game's first and only DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree. So close to being Turd Tree. I think it's Erd Tree. Erd Tree. To get players ready for the expansion, or at least the 38% of players who have actually beaten the boss required to play it, From Software published a trailer recapping the story so far, but leaving out a ton of detail, which is perfect for the game that responds to players asking about the story by spitting on them and smashing them with a club made of a dead god's bones. But we love it. 
We're here for it. More bones, please. Bethesda was on its way to a relatively good PR week with the launch of Starfield's long-awaited Creation Kit and Creation Club. Not the kind that beats people this time. Allowing players to easily make and distribute mods. But then they just had to go and Bethesda it up by charging $7 for a single Bounty Hunter mission. In Bethesda's defense, this is the second of these missions and the first was free. But in Bethesda's offense, that's the sales tactic of a drug dealer and Starfield isn't exactly a heroine. Perhaps fittingly, this $7 mission is called The Vulture. You see, it's a metaphor for how they're picking your wallet clean. There's a very real chance that voice actors may go on strike. SAG-AFTRA's negotiations with game publishers have hit a snag over AI protections according to members of the negotiating committee. According to negotiators, games companies have agreed to many if not all of the protections they've asked for, but they're refusing to give those protections to all SAG-AFTRA members working under relevant contracts. As a result, there's a very real chance of a strike in the next two months. If that happens, it'll be the first time in years that a game will be released that Troy Baker hasn't worked on. What's he gonna do with all that free time? What are we gonna do? PS5 players will soon be able to connect to Discord voice chat directly from their consoles rather than relying on a second device. Discord has also been available directly via Xbox for around two years, making it a great option for multi-platform games with crossplay. The rollout will be gradual, starting in Asia, then Europe, Australia, and New Zealand, the Middle East, and North and South America, which will be startling for Aussie and Kiwi gamers who typically receive new features either half a decade late or Never at all, mate. Oh, what? We got Discord first. Can I? Wait, is that right? And Monster Hunter fans have been left heartbroken after discovering what they thought was a baby monster was just a stupid, boring bird. After the first trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds dropped last month, many took this blurry flying thing to be a child form of the series Puke Puke Monster that everyone immediately fell in love with. Unfortunately, a preview from RPG site revealed that the baby-sized monster was just a normal-sized bird. Birds suck, they don't even have social media named after them anymore. As a result, one fan's wife no longer wants to play the game together as a couple. All thanks to birds, nature's ass. That's why they poop everywhere. But wherever you poop on Tuesday, make sure to keep your phone with you so you can come back here for more gaming news. Don't forget to flush and wash your hands and your phone.